Hello and welcome to Tiger Drop Films, and if you're returning, then I sincerely thank you. Now, I've been watching a lot of Ultraman Blazer lately, and I hope you have too. Now, the new mecha hero, Earth Garen, has truly inspired me, because I'm a big fan of Mecha Godzilla. He's my favorite Godzilla antagonist, and I gotta say, Earth Garen reminds me of Mecha Godzilla so much, and I love it. <laughs> So after watching Ultraman Blazer, I really want to do a quick retrospective on all of the mechas in the Ultraman franchise recently, from Ultraman Z to Ultraman Blazer. So join me today as we talk about the awesome mecha heroes of the Ultraman franchise, and the new spin they put on our favorite Ultra heroes, as in giving the strike teams a new way to help out Ultraman. Who doesn't love giant robots? You see them all throughout Japanese culture. I grew up on the Transformers and they just so happened to be adapted from Japanese toy lines. So we had the Iron Giant, which was a favorite of mine growing up. But if you look all throughout different Japanese franchises, then giant robots, or should I say giant mechas, are a very common popular aspect that people love. It's great for merchandising and just looks cool in general. But when you think of giant robots, you do not usually think of Ultraman, right? Because Ultraman's a stand in for the human hero he's this avatar of being a giant of light and usually whenever he fights robots they're antagonists but recently at the start of ultraman z in 2020 in order to make the strike team stand out a little more and to have a nice way of saving budget the creative teams at super Rad productions came up with the idea to use savenger from 1974's ultraman leo and then bring him back to fight alongside the newest ultraman Ultraman Z, and I gotta say it was an incredible choice. In the Ultraman Z universe, there is only one storage, and it's an offshoot branch of the GAF. And I found this cool little detail about the development of storage, and why there's only one storage, and it's due to a slogan, and here it is. If you're speaking about Japan, then it's robots. <laughs> Kinda sets the tone for this video, don't you think? But I like the slogan, and it makes Storage stand out amongst its parent organization. The leading mechanic at Storage is Mr. Bako, who after the appearance of Grigio Raiden, Mr. Bako was able to use technology related to Grigio Raiden and eventually develop Sevenger, and later on Wyndham for Storage. I love Sevenger in the show, he has a great personality and just overall movement you see from him as he's fighting against kaiju, aliens, and even just picking up things like rubble. I love the detail of having his eyes move with different expressions with his eyelids or eyebrows, you know what I mean, that robot thing going on. And it's funny because he'll be like surprised, angry, neutral, and whenever he's like knocked out or depowered, there'll be like X's over his eyes out of an old cartoon. It's pretty funny. I love this detail. This Sevenger is equipped with a jetpack, a fist that can fire out, and a pretty badass looking drill that you can attach to one of his hands. So overall, I really adore this new version of Sevenger from Ultraman Z, and he has a very lovable uh, demeanor, kind of like R2 from Star Wars. And if you have not checked out the Sevenger fight show, I highly recommend it. It's free on Ultraman Connection. Go check it out. It's fun, and there's some nice surprises in there, like... Sevenger fights Jiris, which is awesome. So let's move on to Wyndham. Wyndham's appeared a lot over the Ultraman franchise. Like in Mebius, he got a bunch of cool upgrades. But the storage version of Wyndham and Ultraman Z is just as awesome. As we get to see how CGI really accents Wyndham's abilities, like he's able to truly use his rockets to slam in a kaiju. He also gets a cool punch move and other little neat gadgets we see throughout the show when he's piloted by Yoko. I gotta say, it's cool how in Ultraman Z, Wyndham was able to move beyond being just a capsule monster, just like Sevenger, and is able to fight alongside his other mecha buddies. It's pretty awesome. And let's talk about the third mecha of the show, King Joe Storage Custom, which was created by Bako along with 
Yuka after Ultraman Z defeated the normal style of King Joe. Now this might be my favorite version of King Joe, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I love his new color scheme. The mix of white and black accompanied by the gold highlights looks really sick. And I love that they made his lights and his chest and eye blue. And that cannon he has looks so cool, man. And it's really destructive in the show. And then his left arm was given this really cool grapple attack where the arm like shoot out and extend. It's pretty much made to sell toys, but am I complaining? No. I just wish I had the toy. <laughs> But they did something even cooler with King Joe storage. And that's how they incorporated King Joe's signature ability to disperse and transform into different parts. And these four parts are the head fighter, breast tank, core ship, and the leg carrier. And they can also all combine to transform into a giant tank mode. So it gives this new King Joe another option for attack and overall just cool visual fights as you can see in the show. And of course, the cell toys, but again, I wish I had it. It's literally a transformer. King Joe storage custom absolutely reminds me of Omega Supreme. If you know, then you know. This King Joe looked awesome fighting alongside his two fellow mechas and Ultraman Z himself. And he would go on to appear in Ultraman Trigger where he was corrupted by... Huh. <laughs> Corrupted by, of all things, the data from Ultraman Powered. What a weird thing to happen. But I guess it's kind of neat. And then for Wyndham, a different version of him would appear in Ultraman Decker, where he would sadly be reduced to being a capsule monster in the form of a card. But at least he was reunited with his two buddies, Agira and Miklas. Next, I'd like to talk about the Nurse Desi that appears in Ultraman Trigger and Ultraman Decker. You know the Art Desi from Tiga and Dinah? What well, if you mixed it with Metal Dragon? And what if that Metal Dragon was Nurse from Ultra 7? Well, then you got the Nurse Desi. Now, I'll give them credit for this one. That was pretty unique. And even though Nurse does transform in these two shows and he's just a big CGI model, it's still a cool sight. And you will hear me talk about this in later or even past videos, but if you're going to bring back an old monster alien and you're going to do something unique with it, then I think this is pretty cool, right? It's not just rehashing them or even using an old design. It's incorporating something old and taking a new twist on it. And for that, I can appreciate Nurse Desi. Because it's not like they always rely on the dragon part. He's mostly in ship form. Because, of course, it's important that they pay homage to the show they're supposed to be celebrating. That was Ultraman Tiga and Dinah. So the Nurse Desi is a pretty gigantic beast. In the Trigger Decker universe, it was developed by the Metron aliens and designed to operate as the primary weapon for Gut Select. Nurse Desi is equipped with weapons such as the Maximum Nurse Cannon, eye lasers, and a technique called Laser Rain. And it's pretty awesome seeing it fight alongside the Guts Falcon. The fact that this beast was used for two shows and two films is a pretty notable thing to consider. And in Decker, the Nurse Desi would return to fight alongside another revamped Ultraman, Tiga, and Dina creation. That would be Terra Phaser, a pretty clear new incarnation of the iconic Death Phaser from Ultraman Dina. Now, the original Death Phaser is a mecha I do have a close connection to. I remember when I was a kid going on a trip and we came across this toy store that sold a bunch of tokusatsu related toys. Believe me, it was like heaven for a couple of minutes. <laughs> but I came across a Death Facer figure and I thought it was the coolest thing. This was before I became an Ultraman fan. So I bought that toy and I made it fight my Godzilla figures. But years later, getting into Ultraman and especially Ultraman Dino, I maybe fall in love with Death Facer again. So I was pretty stoked to see him return in some form in Ultraman Decker. And with that in mind, I think the new Terra Phaser incarnation looks badass. Just like King Joe Storage Custom, he's given a new color scheme and new weapons too. In fact, both of those mechas share the same extending arm grapple attack. But I really love the black and light blue mix of the color scheme that Terra Phaser has, including the red eyes. 
it all just flows together seamlessly. I also love the way the purple highlights on his shoulder guards combine whenever he's firing his Mega Buster Ray. Overall, Terror Phaser is pretty badass, and I'm glad he got to fight some form of King Joe in the Ultraman Decker movie. But there is one qualm I have with Terror Phaser, and it's a bit of a double-edged sword, so let me explain. I love that they brought back the idea of Death Phaser by having Terror Phaser appear a lot in the show, because, you know, a lot of Tiga and Dinah and Gaia characters or villains are ones that don't really appear a lot or can't really reappear again without it being weird in the story. So in that sense, I love that Terror Phaser gives me all the action I was hoping to see for a character I remember as a kid. But in terms of watching Ultraman Decker, I feel like he appears a little too much, and that's only because of the story component he's given of Agams, where Agams is the almost the main antagonist of the show beside the spear, and I feel like him and Decker just fight so much, it feels like, uh, you know, I've seen it so many times. But there are still a few highlights, like that one battle towards the end, where Terror Phaser and Decker are fighting each other so hard, they create a giant crater in the ground, and then it cuts to Kanata and Agams fighting, like, you know, in the human form, so that was a pretty cool battle. But nonetheless, I think Terror Phaser is a pretty cool mecha, and a nice addition to the franchise. Before I move on to the final character on the list, I do want to bring up Ultroid Zero from Ultraman Z. I didn't bring up earlier because I felt like the Destrios monster form with Cerebros outshines the mecha, but I do want to include Ultroid Zero because he was pretty cool and a nice sort of tongue-in-cheek way of celebrating 10 years of Ultraman Zero. And he served a pretty cool purpose in the story. Oh yeah, and a different version of Ultroid Zero appeared in the Destined Crossroad, where he was destroyed by Ultraman Nexus as he turned into Ultraman Nola. So that was pretty cool, check it out if you haven't. Alright, here we're at the last character, the newest addition to the Ultraman franchise's history of mechas, Earth Garen from Ultraman Blazar. I mentioned earlier that I really loved Earth Garen's design, and I love it even more that they added shoulder cannons to him, making him even more similar to Mecha Godzilla, specifically the Kiryu incarnation from early 2000s. And Earth Garen having a shorter tail is reminiscent of the Showa Mecha Godzilla, who is my absolute favorite. Now, Earth Garen was developed by Scar as her primary force against Kaiju in Ultraman Blazar. And Earth Garen's color scheme of dark blue and lighter orange really complements Ultraman Blazar's color scheme, whose is a lighter blue and red. It just fits the show's art style. And Earth Garen was given the expressive eyes we saw of Sevenger back in Ultraman Z, so I really adore that aspect of him. And his eyes glow red when he's taken control by Alien Cannon in one episode. But an important factor in this episode is we see that Earth Garen might be a little sentient himself. Whether it's AI or maybe the mecha just has his own spirit, so to speak. So overall, you can consider me a massive fan of Earth Garen. I cannot wait to see more of him and what upgrades he may earn. So to wrap things up, today I covered the mechas from Ultraman Z and Ultraman Blazar, which included Sevenger, Wyndham, King Joe Storage Custom, Ultroid Zero, the Nurse Desi, Terra Phaser, and Earth Garon. Please let me know in the comments what your favorite mecha is, and it could be from any point in the Ultraman franchise, not just the recent shows. Heck, tell me who you think would win in a fight, King Joe Storage or Earth Garon? Heh, <laughs> might have some fun with that one, huh? It was fun to briefly reflect on the mechas of Ultraman especially when you see so many different robot franchises out in the world. Yeah, even something like Pacific Rim, which is just Monster vs. Mecha or Jaeger. But there's something special about having Mechas fight alongside Ultraman. A different way of showing how humanity can grow up to protect itself by fighting alongside the Giants of Light themselves. I love seeing new innovation in the Ultraman franchise, and I cannot wait to see what new things we're going to see in the future. It's a great time to be a Tokusatsu fan, and stay tuned for my other videos. Well, of course, I'll be doing more over Yakuza, but 
I definitely want to talk more about Godzilla and Ultraman. So, thank you for watching Tiger Trot Films, and please, stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.